Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Picture Books for Summer and Beyond. I'm Julia Smith, Senior Editor, Books for Youth at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click the Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions, and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Also, Booklist will now be offering closed captioning on all webinars. To enable or disable captions on your screen, please look for and click the live transcript icon on the toolbar mentioned above. From there, you can select show or hide subtitles from the menu that appears. If you choose to enable subtitles, you can adjust the size of the captions at any time by selecting subtitle settings. Last but not least, links to today's slides and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the link located there. You can also download the slides and title list by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Lynn Sikora, Vice President of Marketing at Phoenix International Publications, Anna Erickson, Vice President of Sales at The Creative Company, Molly Fletcher, Marketing Specialist at Albert Whitman and Company, Emma Raditz, Editorial and Development Associate at Archipelago Books and Elsewhere Editions, Sarah Gale, Publicist and Editorial Associate also at Archipelago Books and Elsewhere Editions, Heidi Hill, Founder and Publisher of Blue Dot Kids Press, and Maria Russo, U.S. Editorial Director of Mine Edition. First, we'll hear from Lynn Sikora. Lynn is the VP of Marketing at Phoenix International Publications. She started at the company as an acquisitions editor in 2008 and spent six years in the Hamburg, Germany office before returning to Chicago in 2017 to build a marketing team. Take it away, Lynn. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Lynn Sikora from Phoenix International Publications here in Chicago. At PIP, we are committed to crafting, engaging, educational, and entertaining books for children. And we have five children's imprints. You may know our PI Kids imprint as we're a leader in licensed sound and novelty books, including our strong Look and Find series, which is celebrating 30 years this year. But we recently launched a brand new imprint called Sunbird Books, and we know you're going to love it. Sunbird Books is all about innovative and original books for children from zero to 12. And our titles represent strong, lively voices that reflect children's realities and feed their imaginations. In addition, we nurture up and coming artists and authors from around the world. We have board books, graphic novels, including an amazing biographical series called It's Her Story. And I don't wanna go off track, but we're going to focus on our picture books today. And they're great for ages three to eight. And we have been receiving steady industry reviews and encouraging feedback from children and parents alike. So without further ado, next please. First up is our Wonderful Words series. These imaginative books are full of whimsical illustrations and fanciful words showing off figures of speech and building vocabulary. A Wisdom of Wombats is all about collective nouns which are great for kids who love to collect and recite facts, but also great for adults studying for quiz night. Illustrated by David DePisquale, a lead character designer on Netflix's Arlo the Alligator Boy, these hilarious illustrations really bring word definitions to life. My personal favorites include seeing a knot of toads doing yoga, a troop of kangaroos dressed like scouts roasting marshmallows by a campfire, and an aurora of polar bears as they wake up to a beautiful sunrise wearing nightcaps and eye masks. Yakity Yak is all about humorous animal illustrations, exploring language, animal names that are also action verbs. So we have bats playing baseball, a bat bats last, bugs smiling on each other, so a bug has bugged a cafe, 
And the two books down in the bottom of the slide, unfortunately just moved out to fall of next year, but I really wanted to share them with you. A Loveliness of Ladybugs is more collective nouns and Wild Goose Chase is all about idioms. So we see raining cats and dogs opening a can of worms, of course, all comically illustrated. Some good news, all four books are available in library binding for this fall if you can't wait. And I'll tell you more about our library books at the end of the presentation. In general, you can also check our website for additional resources and activities. A link will be shared later and we'll be, add, we'll be adding more so you can check back. Next. Unicorns have bad manners. A unicorn and a dinosaur at a tea party? Yes, please. Nigel and Periwinkle have very different ideas about manners, but do find some common ground and learn a few things from each other. Whether you eat your soup with a spoon from a bowl or with the ladle out of the pot, you're sure to enjoy the humor and message in this debut picture book from Rachel Halpern. And the artist, Wendy, comes all the way from Malaysia and we loved working with her. Next, little dumplings. Hopefully you all ate lunch already or you're about to get hungry. I do every time I look at this book. Padded, pinched, filled, folded. There are so many different ways to be a dumpling. And this is a true culinary adventure as the canadal meets ravioli, gyoza, pierogi, fufu, momo, and more. Bonnie Pang, a Hong Kong artist, really brings humor to the illustrations showing dumplings diving into sauces and doing the backstroke in broth. Plus, my favorite part, a darling illustrated lineup calls out the origins and pronunciation of each dumpling I've been practicing. And our marketing, marketing team is even cooking our way through the book with blog posts to come. So please check back on those. Next. Nook, a Kirkus starred review book by Sally Ann Garland. Sally is from the Highlands over in Scotland, and this sweet autumnal story is all about unexpected friendship and kindness. Nook was inspired by the hollow tree at her son's school, a place of quiet thinking where little ones could feel safe. Nook, our sweet little bunny, prefers to sit silently apart from others, and even though she's often invited, everyone gives her space. When an angry badger sits in her special place, her friends come to her rescue and say, that's Nook's place. She knows they will have her back, giving her less need for refuge. Sally's animal characters have such human expressions and gestures, which children may not even notice, but they are sure to notice Nook's gentle nature and the kindness and loyalty of her friends, a message we all can definitely use. Next, another wonderful book from Sally and Garland, is Stuck Inside, a very timely book since so many adults and children alike felt stuck inside or just plain stuck at some point over the last year. We all know that some of the best stories begin with boredom or loneliness and this story of exploration is no exception. Tilly has to stay inside until a big storm passes and her pup Toby has to stay inside until his paw heals. A sweet reminder that all of the fun of outside is already inside our minds. We have some additional lovely bonus materials like a craft to build your own amazing, astounding, and spectacular dog walking storm protecting machine from the story. And also a read along video of Sally reading. And if you are familiar with the Scottish accent, you could listen to it all day long. Next. The Ants Who Couldn't Dance is the newest title in this social emotional series. The ants can lift, build, and dig, but they can't twirl, dip, or jig like the other animals. Then they realize they can march and dance together as a team. Backlist titles include The Sheep Who Wouldn't Sleep, relatable for anyone who has a child or was a child in this silly tale that subtly teaches self-soothing and mindfulness. And The Owl Who Wouldn't, sorry, The Owl Who Couldn't Growl, where an owl can't howl or honk or roar or bark but discovers who he is in the story about individuality and self-acceptance. Next, doesn't feel like Christmas, but it's always Christmas before Christmas or after Christmas. The Mouse Before Christmas is the poem we all know and love with cheese. Tracy Turner and Jenny Lovely, who won the Waterstones Children's Book Prize for the Girls 
and recently came out with The Boys, really brought a silly and savory version of this well-loved story to life, sure to become a family favorite. How can a knot with sweet verses like this? The other mice dozed in their little mouse beds while dreams full of cheesecake danced in their heads. We also have a wonderful read along with Tracy and her cheese loving pup next to a Christmassy cozy fireplace. Next, two of our lead titles from last year were illustrated by Simona Ceccarelli, Beasties Love Booties, all about dogs and it's even dedicated to some very special dogs. We get to follow all kinds of pups wandering around the city with their humans. Plus we get to imagine what it would be like if dogs wore shoes, something we've probably all thought about. I'm personally a big fan of the poodle and pumps having high tea, the corgi wearing soccer cleats and the French bulldog ready for the beach in flip flops and a straw hat. But it is tough to play favorites with page after page of four-legged favorites so richly illustrated. And if you are a fan of Chicago, you may recognize some landmarks, but if you're not a fan of Chicago, you can just pretend it's a regular city. The next book is, this book is Upside Down, a quirky read all about perspective, literally and figuratively. Penelope Giraffe and Gus Penguin explore their opposite points of view and really hit home that there's always two sides to a story. This is certainly a one of a kind story with great read aloud potential. I had to practice before I read this to my niece and nephews because you're reading and flipping and you wanna keep going in the right direction, but it's a very unique interactive reading experience along the lines of press here or the monster at the end of this book. And you'll absolutely love this fun way to read. Next. So not only did we launch Sunbird Books during the pandemic, but we also launched Sequoia Kids Media, our school and library imprint very recently this past spring. I think we're still in spring, even though it feels like summer. We're taking some of the strongest Sunbird books along with new Sequoia books into library binding along with eBooks and read-alongs. It's been a fun adventure to say the least, and I'll make sure to share that website with you as well. We'll also have more downloadable extras and resources coming very soon. The first series that you can see here is the UR series, which is a self-esteem builder featuring diverse characters in bright and colorful illustrations written by Todd Snow, illustrated by Melody Strong. They're very timely and engaging with simple words while we teach young readers to learn to appreciate others and feel good about themselves. We have all kinds of qualities that we want in our children to teach them to be brave and beautiful, creative, friendly, healthy, helpful, and important. And very sweet messages, uh, for example, in You Are Beautiful, we are saying you're beautiful when you sing and dance, and you're beautiful when you play in the yard or dig in the garden. So a very sweet series that we're looking forward to this fall. Next. And then obviously we have all been um, living in the pandemic over the last year or so. And the Hopeful Picture Book series is just that. It's a wonderful take on pandemic issues that have been met with great resilience from children. So while the country is still making progress, we have this great series that shows what quarantine looks like from different perspectives. If you don't see your parents for a couple of weeks, if you're living with grandparents, what it means to wear a mask or to maybe even care for animals who are impacted. And these were originally created in China under our Cardinal Media imprint and adapted for the North American market. Next. Lastly, road trips were all the rage when plane travel slowed down a little bit. So like the rest of us, Big Bird went to California. He went cross country, learning all about new places and meeting new friends. And of course, a key sesame theme is kindness and it hits home that kindness is the same anywhere you go. 
next. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed reading our books as much as we enjoy bringing them to life. Please follow these links to our website and social media to stay updated and to find more books. We have plenty more coming your way in 2022. And please feel free to contact me directly. I'm very happy to help with any questions you might have, recommendations, ordering, or more about who we are. So thank you again very much. Thank you, Lynn. We'll now hear from Anna Erickson. Anna has worked in the children's books publishing industry for over 25 years and is stubbornly convinced that all children deserve access to high quality reading material. She is based in Oakland, California, and the floor is yours, Anna. Thank you, Juliet. It's great to be here with everyone today. Um, I'm pleased to share a selection of current and upcoming picture books from Creative Editions, a division of the Creative Company in Minnesota, as well as our sister company, Amicus. So let's move straight to the next slide and we'll kick it off with Seashell. This is the follow-up to a little book called Egg by Amy Sky Kloster. And it's the second in a little trio, next, um, of board books with lovely hardcover case binding. So it's a, it's a hardbound, um, board book for small children. And each of them use rhyming pairs next, like pearl shell, whirl shell, and then spotted shell, dotted shell. Um, they're printed on these beautiful uncoated paper next. And at the end of each book, you get a diagram of all of the images that have appeared in the book, in this case, an array of shells. So um, they're lovely little read alouds, have a great vintage feel. And um, look for the third book in the set, Coral, coming next year. Next. Second is Where Go the Boats, which is a fun board book format in that it's a proper board book. Next of Robert Louis Stevenson's classic children's poem, um, which follows the river down to the sea. Next. But in this case, the board book is presented in a fold out format. So you get a spine. Um, it's a book that can fit on the shelf like any other, but the interior is this heavy board that folds out into a panoramic view. And Chris Chaban's luminous artwork just makes for a beautiful little package. Next. Okay. Next is moving on to our proper picture books, kicking off with Jane Yolen's Knowing the Name of a Bird. Next, with illustrations by Jory Vanderall. This is um, Jane's take on the human compulsion, understandably, to name and classify and describe the world around us, including birds. So we have given every bird a name of our own choosing next. But the point of this book is that at the end of the day, none of the birds that we have chosen to name would recognize that name. They have their own ways of identifying themselves and calling to one another through bird songs. But it's a beautiful, beautiful look at an array of birds, again, with lovely back matter. Next, Me Plus Tree is um, the second of a couple of books that we've done recently on displaced persons. And this one comes at it from the perspective of a young girl next, who is, we meet her in an urban setting where she is trying to find her footing and takes refuge um, with a tree stump on the edge of an urban playground. Next, um, throughout the book, we find the girl having a conversation with the stump, kind of imagining it, the history of it as a tree, and then opening up a bit and sharing her own story next. And um, this is a story that, as you can see in this image, is designed not to be something that we can pin down to a specific country or situation. Um, it's, it's more allegorical, um, representing a wide range of people next, but it ends on a very hopeful note with a new green shoot sprouting from the tree trunk, um, representing hope and new beginnings in new places. Next. Also keeping with the nature theme um, in support of the Tales and Tales summer reading theme for this summer, wanted to shout out 
Lights Out, which is a new book by Marcia Diane Arnold and Susan Regan, next. And this book deals with the subject of light pollution, though that phrase is never used in the book. It's much more poetical. But we follow three animals, a bear, a fox, and a bird, as they go in search of true night, true darkness, next, which is increasingly hard to find in our modern world. So they move from an urban landscape um, full of light in the middle of night out deeper and deeper to the wilds until we reach this scene, which somehow for all of the depth and darkness in it manages to be one of the brightest, um, loveliest images I've seen recently in, in our picture books. So it, it's a light-handed look at a, at a difficult issue. Next. Um, as we think about wilderness, I also wanted to highlight Wilderness, um, which is a collection of the writings of John Muir, um, the Scottish American naturalist that lived in the 1800s into the earliest early 1900s. Next. He was known for his work in um, promoting conservation. He was co-founder of the Sierra Club and did a great deal to help bring about um, Yosemite National Park and Sequoia National Park. So like next, um, previous books that we've done with collections of writings, prose writings from um, were authors such as um, Thoreau, that, which we did in A Year in the Woods, and the full capture of the poem If by Rudyard Kipling. This is an illustrated, um, beautiful kind of picture book presentation for really all ages that pairs words with the art of um, the Italian artist Giovanni uh, Mana. Okay, next. As we continue in a in a poetical bent, um, I also wanted to highlight J. Patrick Lewis's book, I Am Elephant, next. This is a follow-up to his book, I Am Polar Bear, and it's all about elephants. It begins, I am elephant, queen of the grasslands, matriarch of tropical forests, and goes on to talk about um, the kind of the heart and soul of what it is to be an elephant and how they have related to people over time. In this image, for example, they talk about elephants um, show love and caring through touch. And then Pat J. Patrick Lewis says they show sadness and grief through tears. So really looking kind of a little bit beyond just the, the typical nature special that we're accustomed to seeing on television. A beautiful book and a beautiful celebration of elephants. Next, um, on a more fun um, level, one that we're not going to see on a nature special anytime soon, we have Bat Wings, Cat Wings. This is a call and response book of sorts. Next, and you see that in each spread setting up um, a yes question and a no question, such as what we have here, moose antlers, yes, goose antlers, no. Other examples would include eagle beak, beagle beak, bat wings, cat wings, and so on and so forth. So pure fun for a call and response read aloud experience. Next. Also in the fun, um, we'll end up creative additions and move on to amicus with I love you with all of my hearts. Next, which is a sampling of unique animal features as examples of depth of love. So like for example, I love you with all of my ears. I love you with all of my nose and ending with this beautiful spread about the multi-hearted octopuses um, and what love could mean from that perspective. Next. Okay, she's gonna look at a few titles from our sister company, Amicus, next. Beginning quickly with No Hugs, which was actually published over a year ago, but boy, we could not have, it was not done for COVID, but this book has gotten a lot of um, mileage this year next, simply because it deals with um, social distancing um, and a lovely example between two friends navigating space and how to still be friends um, with space between them. Next. But moving into new titles, we've got a pair of little um, board books in the Little Animal Friends series. Next, these are Little Penguin um, and next, Little Zebra. Um, next, and both of these use these lovely 
um, they're great little read aloud books because they use rhyming pairs on every spread. So little zebra flopping, sopping, mud holes are fun. These are bread and butter comfort board books of the best possible kind. Um, in each one, these little animals get into very gentle trouble and immediately out of it due to attentive parents. Next, they give you a feeling of warmth and safety. The amicus book of board books are um, like the egg and the seashell books we talked about earlier. These are case bound board books, so they're hardcover. Next, and they use beautiful collage art to show, um, to illustrate word books basically with a light text, but they're basically word books. Um, but the collage art next gives them just a depth of texture um, and a degree of detail that's quite lovely. So we've got two new ones next this season with nature and bugs. And then next, I also wanted to mention the recently published Animal Book of Holmes. And one more slide for that, there we go. Okay, and then we'll wrap it up with um, some new Amicus picture books coming this fall, including My Room is a Zoo next. And this is a little boy going to bed with all of his animals next and it doesn't go smoothly it's total ruckus the animals are all up to something um, next and you will realize as you read it that um, the ruckus that they're up to is alphabetical by the animal name but I think of it more as an alphabet aspect um, more so than an alphabet book it's just a lovely underlying component next um, it's a great little read aloud and the ends the penultimate reveal is finding the zebra dancing under the bed. Um, eventually, next, the little fellow gets everybody organized. He lines them up, gives them one last kiss and sends them off to sleep. Next. So a wonderful bedtime story in a read aloud format. Little Round Panda on the Big Blue Earth next is a follow up to a little brown monkey on the Big Blue Earth. And it starts up close with a little round panda munching on bamboo and then moves back further and further till you get to this scene and then keeps moving back further um, so that you can see where he is situated to answer the question, where is his place on earth? Next, they're tearing up Mulberry Street is written by Yvonne Ng, a Minnesota based engineer turned children's book author. Next who is fascinated by how things work and explaining how things work to kids in ways that they understand. Um, her goal is to get more girls into STEM subjects and she hopes to do this through her books as well as her other projects. So she was a Dr. Seuss fan as a child and it's given us this wonderful book about the process of how a street is made. And finally, who knew next? is a book about how the seasons reveal themselves. Next, um, first from the most sensitive animals who sense a change in the wind. Um, and this book shows how an apple tree reveals the coming of fall to all number of creatures as well as people. And that is it, next. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, have a great summer and we look forward to seeing you throughout. Thank you so much, Anna. Next up, we have Molly Fletcher. Molly is a marketing professional with five years of experience in publishing. She joined Albert Whitman mid-pandemic and specializes in content strategy and email marketing. Molly is a native of Waukegan, Illinois, Ray Bradbury's childhood home, and reads dandelion wine every summer. Take it away, Molly. Thanks so much, Julia. Greetings from Greentown to any Ray Bradbury fans who are on today. Um, I'm excited to talk about what Albert Whitman and company has in store for the coming fall. Next slide, please. So AW is best known for a chapter book series, the Boxcar Children Mysteries but we also have a long storied history of publishing picture books that speak to what kids are wondering about or even struggling with. Our goal in sharing these kinds of stories, especially ones that tackle difficult topics, is to help all children feel acknowledged, valued, and empowered. Next. To kick things off, 
I want to highlight some spring and summer titles that are available now. All of the books pictured here have earned at least one starred review, and three of them have earned two starred reviews. Uh, Listening to the Stars, about Jocelyn Bell Burnell, the astrophysicist who discovered radio pulsars, got two starred reviews, and Shaped by Her Hands, about Tewa Potter Maria Martinez, also got two starred reviews. I wanted to take this chance to point out the Star Festival as well, uh, since Tanabata is coming up in July. This is a multi-generational retelling of the Japanese legend that inspired the festival. School Library Journal called it an exquisite choice for all collections. And of course, I have to agree. Next. Now I'll move into the beyond part of our list and talk about our fall arrivals. First up is Being Mindful Like Grandpa a multi-generational story about connecting with people through what they've taught us. This book follows a boy who has recently moved and is having some trouble adjusting to his new home. So he uses the mindfulness techniques his grandfather taught him to ease his anxiety. The author is a certified meditation instructor, Reiki master, and yoga practitioner. You may recognize her name as she was the author of My Mindful Walk with Grandma, which is pictured at the bottom there. These would make a lovely set. Next. Saturday at the Food Pantry continues AW's tradition of publishing stories about challenging topics, this time food insecurity. The Brookings Institution found that as of June, 2020, approximately 13.9 million children in the U.S. lived in food insecure households. This story invites discussion about food pantries and destigmatizes this necessary resource. Even if readers haven't experienced food insecurity themselves, Saturday at the Food Pantry communicates the important message that everyone needs help sometimes, and it's okay to ask for it. Next. This fall, we're launching the Animalography series, which profiles famous animals from history. Using a combination of first person narration and diary entries, each story is told in the animal's own words. At the top is Spider Knot, Arabella the Spider in Space which would make a great addition to nonfiction collections focusing on STEM, space, or insects. And we have Beautiful Jim, the world's smartest horse, which details how Jim and his owner, Doc Key, performed across the US, promoting kindness to animals along the way. Next. Another series that we're starting is called Money Tales, of, which focuses on financial literacy and is written by a leading financial expert and former FDIC chair. These kid-friendly explorations of topics like loans, interest, and debt use colorful characters and humor to keep the information accessible and engaging. Princess Persephone loses the castle, teaches the importance of reading contracts in full before signing them, and Billy, the borrowing blue-footed booby, illustrates the difference between wanting something and needing it. Both of these books were written by Sheila Bear, who has received several honors for her published work on money and finance for children. Next. I'm excited to share that Imagine This, AW's collection of nonfiction picture books about the natural world, is continuing with two new titles. For those of you who aren't familiar with this collection, the trademarks of an Imagine This book are vivid illustrations, as you can see on the slide, and unique perspectives on familiar subjects. So we have The Second Life of Trees, an in-depth exploration of what happens to a tree when it decomposes, 
and Shipwreck Reefs, which examines how man-made artificial reefs are created and the ways in which they help the ocean. Next slide. If you're looking for nonfiction that will interest reluctant readers, try more than just a game. This own voices story celebrates black players who overcame segregation and prejudice to dominate basketball. From early games and dance halls to the formation of the Black Fives to today's NBA All-Stars, more than just a game uncovers the little known history of the sport and also frames basketball's rise in black communities as part of a larger black cultural revolution. Next. We Want to Go to School is a kid focused account of the landmark case that gave all children the right to a free public education. Readers will learn about the 1972 case Mills versus the Board of Education of the District of Columbia through the eyes of the children and the parents who brought it to court. This empowering story was co-authored by Janine Leffler, who's one of the children who benefited from the law. Next. The next seven books I'm going to talk about are part of AW's She Made History collection, which profiles real girls and women who, despite many obstacles, persisted and forever changed our world. I'll begin with She Stitched the Stars, which is a beautiful lyrical story inspired by Ellen Harding Baker, who stitched a quilt of the solar system in 1878. This story shows how women excluded from higher learning were able to explore science with the resources available to them. It also encourages readers to pursue their interests no matter what other people might think. Next. This book is especially relevant, not only because it is about a public health crisis, but also because it celebrates the contributions of an Asian scientist. Tu Youyou's discovery tells the story of a Chinese scientist who developed a cure for malaria and saved millions of lives. It takes a close look at experimentation and research, encouraging readers to stick with a problem until they come up with a solution. Next. She's on the money shines a light on how women came to be on currency throughout the world. Readers in the US might be surprised to discover that other countries don't just put political figures on their currency. They honor scientists, artists, and other historical figures as well. Each entry in this book focuses on women's empowerment and includes facts about the subject's home countries and time periods. Next. Alicia Alonso Dances On profiles a partially blind prima ballerina who became world renowned. This is an inspiring story about persevering with a disability. Even when her doctors suggested she give up dancing for good, Alicia found a way to keep performing. She then took the US ballet scene by storm and brought the art form back to her home country of Cuba. Next. A Voice for the Everglades follows Marjorie Stoneman Douglas's efforts to protect the Everglades, leading to their establishment as a national park. This book tracks the history of the region through periods of development and conservation while showcasing its diverse ecosystems, plants, and wildlife. Next. Dear Mr. Dickens is the true story of a woman who confronted her literary hero about the anti-Semitic portrayals in his writings. This book explores themes of persistence and bravery as Eliza corresponds with Dickens several times and even after he sends a curt defensive response to her first letter, she persists and in the end convinces him of the damage such characters can inflict on Jewish people. Dear Mr. Dickens is a timely story about speaking up for change and reconsidering your actions. 
In other words, it's the perfect title to help kids understand that it's okay to change your mind based on new information and insight. Next. I'm going to wrap up my presentation today with a vote for Susanna, the true story of a woman elected mayor in Kansas decades before women's suffrage. Susanna Salter's name was put on the ballot as a prank, but she got the last laugh when she was elected for real and served her full term capably. Next slide. That's it from me today. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions about any of the titles or collections I talked about. Um, and I'll pass it back to Julia. Thanks. Thank you so much. Next we have Emma or Emma Raditz and Sarah Gale. Sarah is a publicist and associate editor at Archipelago Books, where she finds great pleasure in assisting in the publication of works and translation. She lives in Brooklyn, New York. Emma is an editorial and development associate at Elsewhere Editions and Archipelago Books. She has worked on books by authors from Denmark, Rwanda, Greece, Italy, Korea, and other countries. She, like Archipelago, is committed to bringing out groundbreaking works of international fiction, visionary children's books from around the world. Take it away, Emma and Sarah. Hello, thank you so much. Um, Sarah and I are excited to share a few books from Elsewhere Editions, the children's imprint of Archipelago Books. Um, we are devoted to publishing imaginative works of children's literature from all around the world. Um, we publish translated books that we hope will cultivate a curiosity and awareness about other cultures and ways of being. Um, Sarah will start us off. Hi, uh, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, thank you for having me. It's really nice to be here with all of you. Uh, I am gonna start with Juan Hormiga, which tells the story of a community of ants most of whom kind of fit the stereotype. Uh, they bustle about, they're very busy making sure that everything is in its right place. Um, Juan Hormiga, on the other hand, is a bit of an outlier. He loves taking very long naps, usually six or seven a day. And when he wakes up, he uh, settles back and tells elaborate stories about his grandfather, who was a famous adventurer. Next. Um, when Juan eventually decides to go out on his own adventure, his fellow ants create stories about him seeming to take up the mantle of narration in his absence. Um, as you can see, the illustrations are detailed and gracefully expansive line drawings with pops of green and red ink, sweeping trees and scurrying lines of critters. Next. Um, we've been really excited to see the attention so far that Juan Hormiga has been getting. Um, Juanita Giles wrote a beautiful review of the book for NPR and Megan Cox Gurdon praised Juan Hormiga in the Wall Street Journal as an assured and charming tale. Uh, it's a book that will get young readers excited about writing and, and sharing stories of their own families with each other. Uh, Gustavo Rodon um, has won several awards including the AB Argentina Award four times and has had his work translated throughout the world. This is his first book to be translated into English. Um, we are also in the process of making a video that we can share with you when it's ready, including readings by young Juan Hormiga fans and an interview with Gustavo Rodon about the process of making the book. Um, now I'll pass it back to Emma. Uh, next slide, please. And actually we can go to the next one as well. Great, so next is Sleepy Stories. Um, this book is coming to us from Uruguay. It's by Mario Librero. Um, and it's accompanied with dreamy, deep-hued illustrations by Diego Bianchi. It's a playful ode to an intimate, beloved routine, a father telling his young son a story before bedtime. Next, please. Um, there's a fun and surreal twist on this familiar nightly act. Mario's son, Nicholas, urges his father to tell him story after story. And as Mari Mario becomes tired, the stories themselves become sleepier and stranger. Next. 
In one story um, that you can see here, a tired man stretches his body all the way down the street and tucks his newly elastic torso into bed. Um, and as you can see on the next slide, um, with each sleepy story, we also have illustrations of these two tuxedo tailed birds who represent the father and son throughout the book. Um, the smaller bird is often propping the book above the father's head and, and begging him for another tail. Um, it's a delightfully unusual book, and I, I think that after reading, kids ages five through nine could craft their own stories around the many squids, birds, and animals that bring the book to life. Um, we received a starred review in Kirkus, and we have an interview coming out with Diego in teachingbooks.net. Um, it's really about the quiet joys of reading together and that special act of turning a page with a child. Next, please. So In the Meadow of Fantasies is coming out in November. Um, it's a book by an Iranian duo, Hans Christian Andersen nominated author Hadi Mohammadi, and an illustrator who we feel is really a rising star, Nushin Safak, who the book opens with a young girl with a physical disability who explores the world through her dreams and creative imaginings. As she's gazing up at a mobile of colorful horses above her head, um, and on the next slide, you can see that a real horse peeks through her door and she joins a group of horses on a magical adventure. The first six horses are easily understood. We learn about their colors, dreams, and origins. Next slide. The seventh horse, however, is an enigmatic creature with no clear dreams or home, but on every page, the other horses lovingly offer something to the seventh until he becomes this rainbow patched pony with six different places to call home. Next slide. It's a very poetic book that teaches grounding themes of sharing and looking at the world with wonder and care. The book was selected this year by Ibby's collection for young people with disabilities. Um, we're actually printing galleys right now, though the book will be this really lovely embossed hardcover. Um, so if anyone would like to receive a, a paperback galley, please let me know. Um, and I will pass it back to Sarah. Hi, uh, back again. So this is Blaze in the Castle Cake for Birth the Day. It is a high spirited and high energy book about making a mansion sized birthday cake uh, that can actually hold a party within it. Uh, it has a large dose of kid humor. There are um, many, many situations in which teeny birds are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They should be uh, writing party invitations, but in reality they are helicoptering around or reading a book. Um, kids will recognize themselves in the mischief of this book. Uh, next, please. Uh, I think this is really a book that kids would choose for themselves. It's silly and crazy, and the people who read the book aloud will be put in the position of having to say, made up words, um, which kids love. Next. Um, it's also um, a story that I can see kids bonding over at school or during play dates because of the general hilarity. And because as you can see in this spread, um, in the final pages of the book, when the, the birthday party occurs, there are many characters from kind of storybook past and um, invited. So there's Alice in Wonderland, Snoopy with E.T., Max from Where the Wild Things Are, all kinds of other characters as well. Um, and then I just want to say a quick note on Claude Ponty. Go to the next slide, please. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to kind of quickly add that uh, we have two other books by Claude Ponty. Um, this one, His No Beauty, and the next slide we have um, My Valley, which we published in 2017. And um, those are both available now. And next, please. That's all, thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to us and we will uh, be happy to be in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Emma and Sarah. Now we'll hear from Heidi Hill. Heidi is the founder, publisher, and acquiring editor of Blue Dot Kids Press, a children's book publishing house devoted to captivating stories and spectacular illustrations that build relationships to the natural world and our global community. She grew up with a love of reading, reverence for the outdoors, and necessity of contribution, which guides what she does at home and with Blue Dot Kids Press. 
Always looking at books from an international perspective, Heidi, a dual citizen, splits her time between San Francisco Bay Area and New Zealand. Welcome, Heidi. Great. Hello. Thank you very much for the introduction. And a big thank you to all the librarians joining today. Thanks for all the work you do for our communities and our schools. So Blue Dot Kids Press is a small independent children's press with a big mission located in San Francisco, California and Wellington, New Zealand. Our name, Blue Dot Kids Press, is a nod to Carl Sagan's famous ode to our home, planet Earth, the pale blue dot, and a reminder to us all to preserve and care for our home. We aspire to empower the next generation of global citizens with empathy, resilience, creativity, and the shared value of nature and its stewardship. We publish titles focused on two main themes. First, skills for global citizens such as empathy and resilience, and the second focus area is nature, environment, and conservation topics. All of us at Blue Dot Kids Press are elated by the warm embrace we have received from our debut list. Readers, librarians, educators, and booksellers and reviewers across the country were so supportive of our debut titles, and we've been so thrilled with the starred reviews across the board from Booklist, thank you, to Kirkus and PW and School Library Journal. Thank you for this warm welcome. We're here also to help you with resources. Our teacher's guides are developed by professional educators. You can download them on the resource tab on our website. Now onto our titles. First up, Seeking an Aurora. This recently released picture book is making a splash. Along with receiving two star reviews, it has received glowing reviews in the Wall Street Journal and Brain Pickings. Brain Picking says it's a work of transcendence and tenderness, and Kirkus says it's a magical experience. In this book, a child and father share an unforgettable moment and the majestic splendor of the aurora at night. This book is perfect for those who love Al Moon. On to a Welcome Home Wales, which was also just published. This poignant and optimistic story reveals timely themes of empathy and conservation that will resonate with children concerned about wildlife, the environment, and how they can make a better world. This uniquely combines social and emotional learning with science and environment themes. And the fiction book ends with a back matter page that lists all of the ways kids and parents and teachers can help whales wherever they live. Kirkus says it's beautifully tender and moving and even hopeful. And we're proud that 1% of the sales of this book will go to animal conservation through our partnership with the nonprofit Defenders of Wildlife. There's lots of great resources to check out on our website for this book. Next slide, please, is on to our new multilingual board book series for ages zero to five. We're really excited about this series. This book, board book series encourages multilingual exploration and curiosity about our world among young readers. Each book promotes language learning through playful and sophisticated collages. Language is a powerful tool that binds us together across cultures and developing our skills beyond a single language can help us to problem solve and use critical thinking skills. These board books pair gorgeous collages of 18 types of ocean animals or birds with their names across the six most widely spoken languages worldwide by total number of speakers. So if someone is learning a language, it's likely one of these languages. These sturdy board books are filled with beautiful collages and they can work for many different ages, including babies, toddlers, and preschool and kindergarten age classrooms and homes. They're great for classrooms trying to expose kids to both science and language learning and great for teaching moments and lots of extension opportunities. There's the four titles, Birds, Ocean Animals, and Out in the Fall, Plants and Animals. Next up is Goodbye Old House out this fall, a joyful story about moving home and embracing change from a much loved award-winning team, a heartwarming story of letting go and starting anew with a unique illustration style that allows room and space for the reader's imagination. Children dealing with change and leaving things behind is a universal topic. And come the start of this new school year, kids will be dealing with a lot of change, some going back to school or some even moving new homes. So this balances the sadness and reluctance of leaving one place with the excitement and the enthusiasm of discovering another. On to Little Bird's Day, also out this fall. A child-friendly read aloud and bedtime book that pairs beautiful calming art with powerful and poetic language for one of Australia's best known indigenous writers. This is a joyful universal story of a day in the life of a little bird who sings the world alive flies with cloud, travels with wind, and nestles with moon, and dreams of flying among the stars. 
Little Bird's Day offers a peaceful and welcome respite in nature's calming rhythms. And this is written by an indigenous Australian team whose uh, author Sally Morgan is one of Australia's best known indigenous artists and writers. Now on to a short selection of our most celebrated 2020 titles, Jacob's Fantastic Flight. Jacob's Fantastic Flight earned three-star pre-publication reviews from Kirkus, PW, and Booklist. Booklist called Jacob's Fantastic Flight delightful. This is a humorous story about embracing the unknown. Jacob's Fantastic Flight shows what happens when a child uses their strengths and differences to help others in need. A very encouraging, humorous, and uplifting book. Next, on to The Day Seda Arrived. This book is a Jane Addams Children Book Award finalist and also a notable trade book in the language arts. This book celebrates the universal language of friendship and the power of language to build bonds beyond borders. The Day Seda Arrived celebrates learning from others, respect, and empathy. And last but not least, My Favorite Memories. My Favorite Memories is a book list star title. It offers parents and educators a gentle but impactful way to discuss the idea of resilience along with complex life events like immigration and moving to a new home. This book won the Bologna Ragazzi 2020 Award for Fiction. So when looking at books to fit a theme, we've created a few slides with each book listed by grade and curriculum theme. You can reference at the end of the presentation if you'd like. Please know that you can bring the world into your library or classroom with virtual and interactive events with Blue Dot Kids Press. Please reach out if you're interested in learning more. And I'd love to say thank you so much for joining. I hope that this has sparked your curiosity enough to invite you to check out our website, our catalog, and our list of titles. And when you're looking for our books, please know that we're distributed by Consortium and Ingram Brand. Remember that most of our books are available as ebooks as well. You can see on the last slide here um, our contact information. And I'd love to hear from you. Please reach out with any questions or to re request a review copy at hello at bluedotkidspress.com. Thanks for all of the work you do every day. Take care. Thank you so much, Heidi. Our final panelist today will be Maria Russo. Maria is Mine Edition's US Editorial Director co-author of How to Raise a Reader, a popular guide to fostering a lifelong love of books in children ages zero to teen. And before joining Mine Edition was the children's books editor at the New York Times, where she handled thousands of children's books each year, assigning reviews and essays and writing regularly herself about children's books and their creators. Take it away, Maria. Oops, oops, oops. Hello, am I? Okay, I am so sorry. I don't know what you heard so far, but I will just jump right in to uh, the books we have for you next. We are gonna start with a look at our spring books available now or soon. I'm gonna start with the two board books you see because Mind Edition really shines in the board book category and I hope you'll be able to see these in person very soon. The quality, the durability, the art, it, the words, everything is at a super high level. The concepts really tied to developmental stages in toddlers, that everything is executed so well. I just love our board books. So I'll just start with these, these two that we have new this spring. Uh, Peak a Mood is a social emotional book that is also uh, a fun guessing game. Each spread has a different monkey or primate with a prompt to guess how they're feeling. The facial expressions are very clear and very adorable. And you can lift one flap for a clue um, or both flaps and get your, your answer. It's, um, it's really fun. It's getting a great feedback from parents and uh, teachers and librarians alike. Where Do You Poop is publishing today. Um, very exciting. I, I call this the ultimate potty training book. It is a whimsical look at where various animals from dogs to mice to birds 
to a wolf um, poop as a way to help the, the toddler understand uh, where, that they're gonna poop eventually in their very own potty. So each page has a whimsical, silly rhyme, but of course the most exciting part is um, this proprietary technology here. You pull the flap and the poop appears. Uh, if you know toddlers, you know this will be a very big hit um, and, uh, and hopefully extremely helpful in the, the potty training journey. Uh, next. And just want to give a quick look at our, 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 this is a spring, this is, was out in March, the King's Golden Beard from the Belgian artist, illustrator, author, and animator, Klosfer Plank. This is just a terrific, timely read aloud. Got a great review in the New York Times, um, and it's just getting uh, fantastic responses about a vain king with a big ego who bans all beards except his own. But when his beard grows all around the world and appears at the palace's back gate, uh, he of course doesn't realize it's his own because he doesn't, he doesn't believe the scientists when they tell him that the world is round. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, lots of uh, retribution ensues. And the thing about this book is that it's a great conversation starter about so many things that are important right now to talk about with, with children, leadership, fairness, respect for science. Um, it's just a rollicking good time with really cool art um, as all of our books have, but Klaus especially I think brings, it brings incredible energy and zing to his art. Next. Um, Pangolina is coming on June 8th. This is Jane Goodall's latest books, book. Everyone of course reads so much, so many wonderful children's books about Jane Goodall. It's always great to hear Jane's own voice. And we've already gotten one star from Kirkus. I'm hoping there'll be more on the way. This book is so important and so affecting. So Jane Goodall, of course, um, you know, when she learned that the pangolin was being blamed for bringing coronavirus to humans, she sprang to action and started to write this tale about a, a baby pangolin who is um, separated from her mother and, um, and hunted down by, by traffickers and, but rescued by a brave little girl named I. So it's got, it's got a hopeful and encouraging ending. And what's, what's, what's so interesting to learn about pangolins in this book is, you know, they're the only mammalian species with scales. They're endangered because those scales are prized in Chinese medicine and are, and in, 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 uh, and are a delicacy. And they're also, the, the poignant thing, they're also easy prey because when they're attacked, they don't run away or fight back, they curl into a ball. So it's a fictional story with suspense and a happy ending and lots of information at the end for young conservationists and citizen scientists about about helping the pangolin and of course Jane's overall message of empathy for our fellow creatures. Next. And moving to fall 21, we have some really exciting uh, things in store for you. The first one I'll talk about is Antonia, which is really become an in-house favorite. It's an exciting debut from a Colombian illustrator named Dipacho who has a style we're calling John Klassen meets Oliver Jeffers. His art is just adorable and grabs your heart um, next. Um, you know, it's a mostly wordless story about a little girl, her family and her dog who are journeying to a new home. Next. Um, and here's, here's Dupacho. And I'm just, and we'll go quickly through next, the next few, little piece, a few pieces of art, if you could just go, go through them. It's a, it's, a, it's a story about displacement. The family is displaced from their home, but as Dipacho says, there's always a way to find happiness and have fun if you're with the people you love and your friends. We have a trailer coming too, I hope you'll get a look at. That's coming in September. And I'll just go quickly uh, to our next to our, our lead title, which is Dan Yaccarino's The Longest Storm. This is a book geared to the pandemic, but never mentions the pandemic. It takes place during a storm uh, that has next that there's, there's Dan. Um, Dan is, has said this is his most personal and most uh, sort of powerful book he's done. Next, 
it has, uh, to, so this family is, is confined to their home next, as so many of us were by this storm next. And there's just lots of relatable details from the crazy pandemic haircut to lots of conflict and, uh, and anger and a, 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 a beautiful apology scene and a hopeful uplifting ending. Um, it's gonna be printed on beautiful uncoated Italian paper. I think you'll see Dan's art looking really different in this book than what you're used to. So we're so excited to bring this book out uh, in September next. And finally, a nonfiction book about the pandemic, Sea Lions in the Parking Lot, is based on all of those tales you might have seen viral videos about the animals that wandered out of their habitats during the pandemic uh, and into human spaces and what scientists learned from them uh, next. And what we're all trying to take away from it when we think about how to share the earth better with our fellow creatures. So it's just gorgeous art incredible, well-researched information about 12, um, 12 animals who stepped out a bit during the pandemic and what they taught us. And then next I'll just, I know I'm at my, I'm, at, I'm out of time. We're reissuing this incredible book called Why, a wordless, we're reissuing it in the wordless form. It had been issued one time with some words added. We heard online, people wanted the wordless edition restored. We've added a wonderful afterword from Leonard Marcus. This is a book about peace and about escalation and what and, and about and shows children a path to de-escalation as a, as, a, as a frog and a, mou a mouse turn an everyday argument into all-out war. Um, it's really, this is really a special book that I hope you'll take a good look at when it comes back out. And then next, I just wanted to give one final shout out to the full suite of mine edition board books. If you get a chance to look at them, they really bring so much to toddlers and, um, and for librarians, I think they're especially attractive because they're so sturdy. They really hold up to repeat readings, even the die cut ones for little fingers. Um, and they're all developmentally appropriate and keyed to the key moments of development. So please take a look at those if you get a chance. Next. Um, and that's it. Just wanted to, to end with um, another look at our, our three fall books. This is the first list of that's been developed here in the US. I'm so proud of it. Uh, this is my first time on this side of things, as I mentioned. And um, I hope you'll get a chance to look at these three books that we've really worked so hard to, um, to bring for the fall. So thanks again. And please keep in touch, send comments to our Edelweiss, or I'm always open on email. And I would really love to hear your, your feedback as we're building this new identity as uh, a US internet based international imprint. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Maria. And a big thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists. Tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, title list, certificate of completion, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like those you see here. Did you know registration for ALA's virtual annual conference and exhibition is now open? Taking place between June 23rd and 29th, this year's conference will feature amazing speakers, educational programming, and an opportunity to connect with colleagues and librarians everywhere. Visit 2021.alaannual.org for more details. And not yet a subscriber? Pair the print reading experience with convenience of online access at booklistonline.com and lock in print online digital and archive access by taking advantage of this special webinar offer to get booklist for only $75. Plus, while you're at booklistonline.com, peruse the latest issue of Booklinks, a quarterly supplement full of literary, STEM and classroom connections freely available to all readers right now. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. And one more thank you to our sponsors, Phoenix International Publications, The Creative Company, Albert, Whitlin, Albert Whitman and Co, Elsewhere Editions and Imprint of Archipelago Books, Blue Dot Kids Press and Mine Edition. This concludes today's webinar. See you next time.